Hi, I'm Alistair. I make escape room games. And a few videos ago, I described this cotton canvas paper, which is a durable, robust way of creating printed puzzles and props for use in an escape room. In this video, I want to create kind of a, a companion to that, which is to describe how you can create a realistic handwritten style font um, so that you can print text onto this paper and make it look like a handwritten note. So I'm using Inkscape, which is an open source vector graphics editor. I'm just going to select the text tool and type some text. So uh, this is some handwriting. And uh, commonly what people do in this is if I uh, select the text here and then just choose a font that kind of looks like a handwritten font. So Segoy script is a fairly common one. Now, at the moment, this has got some faults. The I and the S at the end of this, and is here, and this S here, you can very clearly see that they use exactly the same glyph, and the I is down here as well. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to turn it into a path, and then select it again, and then I'm going to use this tool. This is the Tweak tool, and I'm going to make some sort of broad changes just to vary the fonts of it. So there's different ways to tweak, and first of all, I'm going to move the objects, just sort of jiggle them around a bit. So by dragging this tool over the letters, it's going to make them not quite so aligned. It's going to alter the vertical and the horizontal uh, positioning slightly the nodes. Then I'm going to select this one. This will let me rotate each element slightly. So if I just hold down to start with, uh, it rotates clockwise. If I hold down shift, it'll rotate some of the glyphs anti-clockwise again. So this is just to create a bit more sort of random variation um, as a sort of a, a broad adjustment first of all um, to make this look less like a, a computerized font and more like sort of the natural variation you'd expect to see in someone's handwriting. So you can see there those two eyes either side of the T are already starting to look a little uh, less similar. Let's move that G quite a lot there. Bend those backwards, wiggle those around a bit. So this is all just to, uh, as like I say, sort of a broad um, changes first of all. We'll make those S's bend backwards a bit more. Make that one bend the other way. Just because um, that kind of tends to trick your eye a bit more. So we've got some other things we can do. We can push things around. We can uh, shrink them. So maybe if we shrink some of the characters as well. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the game Dobble, which is where you uh, have to find matching glyphs on different cards. But when you find that uh, those same glyphs are rotated in different ways or differently sized, it actually makes it surprisingly difficult to uh, tell that they are the same. So just by making these subtle differences, uh, you'll already find it looks slightly more naturalistic text uh, than it did to start with. So that's uh, probably it for the sizing. Uh, what else can we do? We can move them around. Oh, that's what we did to, to start with, wasn't it? Yeah, let's just do that a bit more. And then, uh, like I said, there's, there's other sort of uh, tools you can do. But this is going to uh, be my broad stroke. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to edit the glyphs a bit more individually. So if I click the node edit tool and just zoom in a bit more so I can see what's going on. So what I can do is I can take each of these nodes that define the path and I can actually individually drag them around if I wanted to just to edit the shape uh, slightly so if I could drag them outwards like that but that's going to be a bit uh, that's going to be quite a harsh change so I'm only going to move them slightly subtly to start with um, and the other thing you can do that's quite effective is to remove nodes from the past so this delete selected nodes here I can actually take nodes away from the path and what it will do this will make the uh, outline of the shape sort of defined just from the nodes either side. So it will smooth the shape out slightly. And a combination of um, just deleting nodes so I can do them individually or I can select massive uh, groups of them together. And you'll find that a combination of sliding nodes around, deleting nodes, moving them around the path just subtly, don't overdo it too much, uh, will make that difference that will make the letters look differently. Let's go on to this letter and do the same again. So we'll just delete some of these sort of nodes that lie in the middle of the path that don't make a huge difference to the shape. You can use the delete key on the keyboard is a bit of a quicker way to do it as well. Move that one around. And then you can just repeat this uh, you know, as, as much as you want really to create the degree of variation just to make that text look slightly more natural.
And um, that's the finished product. So, um, I mean, you can take as long or as little as over this as you want, really, to make those edits. But you can see that uh, just that slight variation in size and of rotation and of just moving some of those nodes around has made that look like a, a more natural. It has the kind of the distortions you'd expect to find in natural handwriting and less like someone has just uh, typed some text into a uh, handwritten font on a computer and I just think it adds a little bit more extra realism for any um, supposedly handwritten notes that you might find in an escape room or other puzzle. Uh, so that's today's tip of the day.